Hello there, welcome back. Good morning, welcome to the summer solstice event. So this event obviously comes around once a year and they are really beefing it up here with a increased odds probability. Let me show you this real quick, 3.6%. That is by far the highest that we've seen, um, especially considering the fact that as we can see here, let me get this off the screen. Let's do this. Um, let's see. All classic heroes are excluded from this summon. So that means no season one heroes in here. So um, this is a good time to, to summon. I would recommend if you're a cheap to play player, this is... I know it's hard to only summon once a year or twice a year, but I would recommend summoning in this event and and then just saving up gems for a year until this event comes back around. So if I were running this company, I would have migrated over to this business model a long time ago where the chances of pulling a five-star hero are, are much higher. So you're going to average... When you include the hero of the month, you're going to average about one five-star hero every 20 pulls on average. That means you have a 50% chance. So you could very well go 40, 50 pulls without getting a five-star, but it's honestly not likely. So, and all the heroes are available, all the good heroes. Of course, there's still a lot of, there's still a lot of junk. Uh, most of the heroes of the month are basically... Um, junk at this point. There are good ones, but um, most of them are, are not like this guy right here. I mean, what's anybody ever going to do with him? So, um, that being said, this is a good place to pull, and it's not expensive. I mean, 8400 for a 30 pull is one of the cheaper things, offers, not offers, but um, requirements. And then uh yeah anyways let's take a look real quick at the you know they're they call them the featured heroes but they're the previews to what's coming in the future so this this is the event i think i think this was the event where everyone pulled jove um last time that might have been the um black friday event which is basically very similar to this. But here we got Phantom of the Opera. Deals 405 damage to the target and nearby enemies, but he's at average speed. So if you compare him to Hurricane, who does 415 at fast speed, this is a lot of damage, but it's not an increase of damage over what we've seen in the past. Now the target and nearby enemies dance to Ballad of Obsession for four turns. All existing status effects will be removed when this is added. So they're... Um, increasing the number of heroes that have, let's call it gazelle-like properties and, and changing them around a little bit. I kind of like that, actually. So, Ballad of Obsession, minus 40% mana generation, minus 40% decrease for any healing received. So, unlike Gazelle, um, Phantom of the Opera casts this onto the enemy. Uh, gives immunity to new status effects. And this effect cannot be dispelled. The effect if, is removed when the caster dies. So, this, he, I mean, he's a great, he, he'd be a great hero. And he's a good anti Ludwig hero. Um, just, I mean, he's going to be a fantastic hero. Look at his passive here. The character receives 10% health each time a status ailment expires or is cleansed, removed, or relocated from them. So this effect can activate only once per turn. 10% is going to heal him. He gives himself a 5% bonus. 10%, yeah, 5% to HP. 10% if there's two of these um, opera family. So yeah, he's looking at somewhere around, this is not actually, I don't, I do not have the double limit broken thing on here. So his stats are very high. So anytime anything is removed from him or expires, he's going to gain somewhere around 180 hit points, which is pretty good. So 
he's he'll be great. And then Odette, I think this is the one everybody wants. At average speed, the caster regenerates 609 HP over three turns. That's very pertinent because this is the... She also has a gazelle-like effect, and you want her to stay alive. So the caster gets plus 45% chance to dodge special skills that deal damage for three turns. So that means she does not... Um, she does not dodge special skills that don't deal damage. So anything that is just a status effect, like, um, let's see if um, Anubis casts Greed, something like that, that doesn't deal direct damage, and so she won't be able to dodge that. Cast <clears throat> Dance of the Swan to all allies, but the caster for three turns. All existing status effects will be removed, sort of like Gazelle plus 45% chance to dodge attacks and special skills. So the um, this dodge is a little bit different for the allies, which is good, than it is for herself. And uh, let's see, chance to deal 360, oh, so 50% chance to deal 360% damage to a random enemy after any subsequent ally allied special skill is cast. So she's kind of like Hippo here, except she only has a 50% chance to deal 360 damage to one random enemy. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, gives immunity to new status effects, and the effect cannot be dispelled and is removed if the caster dies. So she has the dodge that helps to keep her alive. She helps to keep your heroes alive. She's going to be a great, great flank in my opinion. Um, I probably would not put her as the tank because I, I wouldn't want a team to stack green tiles against her because that's how, that's how you're going to kill her. She dodges direct damage once her special goes off. And so uh, at flank, I think she's going to be very, very dangerous on a defense team. So that's our new heroes. Basically, every other hero is available. Here with very high odds, you're going to see a lot of offers coming from Zenga for food and trainer heroes because they want you to pull a bunch of great heroes here and then want to level them. So, which honestly is what I would have done a long time ago. I'd make everybody happy by getting all the heroes that you want and then, um, you know, then you got to pay to level them. So, let's give this. A shot. Let's see what we get. Now I have a lot of heroes, a lot of five stars, so chances of me getting a dupe here are pretty high. But there are a lot of heroes out there still that I would like to get. So hopefully if I guess if I get lucky and get a five star, hopefully I get lucky and get one that's not a dupe. Yeah, basically every three star and four star here that I get is going to be a feeder hero. I think I have just about all three star and four stars. All right, well, come on. This is looking like normal odds to me here. Riffin, he's pretty good, but I, I still haven't leveled him. Oh, Caitlin, I've got pulled her twice in the last. I didn't have her, and then I pulled her twice in the last um, the event that just went by the challenge festival. So now I have three of her. Let's see. Come on. Something better than Caitlyn here. Come on. Uh, Hero of the Month. I've already got him. All right, let's jump back in here. We'll do another 30 pull, and then we'll open the chests and see if we got anything good from the chests. Come on. 
Let's get something interesting here. Annabelle, she's really good. Oh, actually, I did want him, so that's good. He'll help with my Titan attacks. Did not get him from the um, from the seasonal event. Sun Shang Zing, I have her double limit broken. She's a really great, great hero. Vanda, a dupe. I don't have her. I have her costume. I, I haven't leveled her yet. She is a very useful hero. She's one of those heroes that, when used correctly, um, she's very... The mana, uh, the, the heal, she cuts healing, right? Yeah, I think she cuts healing. And then also dispels at very fast speed. I have to look at her. I can't remember exactly. Oh, well, Lacey. That would have been nice if she had the costume. Because I don't have the Lacey's costume. I do already have her. Sorsha, I already have her as well. See, that's the problem here is that even though you know, you're basically guaranteed to get five stars, but not guaranteed to get the good ones. There's some new gargoyles that I would like. So he's really good. Annabelle, I might actually level another one of her. I, I did not level her. Um, I mean, I, when I, during the, um, during the Halloween event, when I pulled numerous copies of her, I didn't keep them all because she wipes off um, the buffs off of your own team. And so, you know, I figured that, yeah, she's a deep heal. She's a really good healer, but her, her utility would be limited. But if you pair her with costume, with actually the second costume of um, Cyprian, then they charge together. And so she wipes off his counterattack and he puts it right back on. And the two of them together is a really, really, really stout team. So let's go, let's get, I'm just going to go get enough gems to go do one more 30 pull here. Make this interesting. All right, we are ready to go here. <clears throat> I did let one of my kids do 10 pulls right before this video started but uh, we didn't get anything from there so I want to do one more 30 pull that'll put us at exactly 100 so that we can see what we actually ended up with so having done 100 pulls see um, how many heroes we got we are actually above the um, advertised odds so to speak Come on, something good. Ah, Lady Woolerton, you know, I think I've underestimated her in the uh, in the past. At a having a healer at fast speed is um, is beneficial in certain circumstances. So I'm going to keep that version and level her up. Now that I'm starting to use four star heroes a lot more. Well, this has not been a very lucky day for me, but we'll see. We're not over yet. Oh, the nine-headed beast. That is really random. And Ferdinand, holy crap. All right, well, uh, there it is. I got two really good heroes back-to-back -back there that I don't have already. That's pretty good. It was very close to the end of that 100. So Nine-Headed Beast, it's kind of weird to pull him, um, you know, in the Solstice event as opposed to pulling him in the brand-new 
uh, War of Three Kingdoms event that's out right now. So I did make a video on him. I actually showed you the position that I would put him in. So I'm going to do that and we'll see, see how well he works. I am going to try him at 370 before I level him up. See if he's worth it. Because I do have some other good blue heroes. Ferdinand here, this is probably the the star of this event for me, pulling Ferdinand. He is so good, and they didn't nerf him. So he still has the prioritizes cleansing status ailments, which allows him to clear off things like greed. These are the things that I've attacked with, and without... I don't know, I won't say it without realizing, by forgetting that he prioritized this cleanse. I've hit his teams with greed, I've hit his teams with reflect, and he keeps, you know, cleansing and then putting reflect back onto that team itself to reflect my ailments. So he is a huge pain in the butt. Um, but yeah, so all in all, pretty good. I think I ended up with, what, six? Five stars there, plus a hero of the month. Um, so, going close to double the odds, I think. And, um, yeah, so best of luck to you. I hope you get some good stuff. The odds of getting one of the opera heroes is really, really small. So, you really, you would need to expect to do about 500 pulls to have about a 50% chance of pulling one of them. So... I know it says 0 0.02, but that's um, that's right where it gives you a... I have to look it up, what the probability is. I think it's um, great. I think it's somewhere like 75% chance or something of getting one at that point. But it's by no means guaranteed. So, and then buying gems when you're not buying the offers is a lot more expensive. So... I'm not going to be chasing those opera heroes. I might, I'll probably do some more pulls maybe on the last day just to make another video. And um, we'll see. Last year I did get Jove just kind of randomly. I didn't do that many pulls. So um, yeah, best of luck. And I will see you in the next video. Actually, no. Before I sign off here, I want to open this chest so you can see what you can expect. Four-star Aether and a Tome. That's nice. These chests are actually... They have much better stuff than normal chests. So food and emblems. That's great. Here we got a four-star and some three-star Aethers. Also very useful. Three-star Trainers. Another... Unfortunately, what I actually need is the three-star yellow aethers, holy aethers. Emblems, that's good. I can use all the emblems I can get. All right. Oh, five-star aether. Nice. All right, so there you go. That's what you can expect from the chest. Now I'm signing off. Have a good one. Hi, guys. My name is Minnie Mall. Uh, I'm going to do some of the solstice summons. Uh, uh, I'm going to do a 10 ball because I have enough. And, yeah. Rudolph, okay, that's good. Jack, okay. Kales are pretty good. Okay, okay. Ooh, that's that's kind of good. That's a four star. Ooh, that's pretty good. Four star. Three star. Three star. Okay. My best ones I got are the four stars. Which is, which is this. This. Oh, this. Well, I think that's all the summons I can do right now, so... Bye.